The last leg of my journey to the Greenland ice sheet is a four-hour ride on a small plane out of Reykjavik. Most of my fellow passengers are scientists or students. As Greenland comes into view, we first fly over the coastal mountains, which quickly give way to the flat, white vastness of the sheet. The first stop is Alulasat, where one of the world's fastest moving ice streams meets the sea. The iceberg that sank the Titanic may well have calved off here before it drifted into the sea lanes. Most people think of Greenland as a land entirely covered in ice. But Greenland's coastal zone in the summertime is a spectacular landscape with thousands of mountains, rivers, lakes, and waterfalls, like this one on the Watson River. Up to the ice edge, a spongy green tundra landscape is home to wildlife. Overlooking everything is the forbidding, uninhabitable zone of ice, three times the size of Texas. Near the ice edge, melting is normal in summer, and thousands of jewel-colored lakes form in the rugged terrain. Their bottoms are dark with cryokinite, a mixture of dust, pollen, soot, and algae. Many kilometers further up on the ice, the sheet flattens out into a vast, white immensity. Nearer the sheet's boundary, the movement of ice and the action of melt water makes for a rugged, treacherous moonscape. Scientists here are working to answer critical questions for the planet's future. As human-caused global warming continues, how fast will this ice melt? And how much will it contribute to sea level rise? <laughs>